Okay, uh, I mentioned a name earlier, and you guys seem to be really excited. Lee Holden? So, so strange how exciting that is. So here's a funny thing. So um, I, uh, I, I met Lee last night at, at dinner and uh, gave him a big hug and walked away and realized I had never met him before, but it felt like I'd known him for 10 years. And then I remembered, oh yeah, energy. That kind of makes sense. So he's the actual real deal because I left that interaction feeling like it had, I had come back home. You know those people in your life when you, you meet them for the first time and it feels like you're home? That's what he felt like. And so the fact that Lee is gonna come up and share with us, he is a Qigong master, he is the producer of the Searching for Superhumans docu-series, he's an author, and his PBS special, Less Stress, More Energy, was viewed by more than 50 million households. Pretty freaking impressive. So guys, give a huge AFES welcome to Lee Holden. Thanks, man. Thank you, brother. So good to be here. So good to be back here, you guys. I mean, talk about energy, right? Energy is what we've been talking about. Love, connection, authenticity, vitality, right? Vulnerability. And this is all energy. Can you show me love? Can you? Is it in your hands? Is it in your heart? Right? We say, we've been talking about the heart. Vision did such a great exercise about opening the heart and connecting. But if we do surgery on the heart, we don't see love. We don't see love. So in Qigong, they say life is ruled by invisible energy, invisible forces. In the Tao Te Ching, there's a saying, we shape clay into a pot, but it is the emptiness inside that is useful. We take wood and build walls in the house, but it is the space inside that's useful. And we're creating space. That's what communities like this do. They create powerful, positive, invisible energy. So everybody's been talking about energy, right? How many people feel energy in their bodies? How many people feel energy in their bodies? You know what that feels like? Yeah? Electric. So the word in Chinese, qi, it simply means energy. It means energy, okay? But it's mystical. This word qi is mystical. It's mysterious. And you are mysterious. You are mystical because we cannot define you. We can't put you in a box. We can't say this is what you are. This is who you are. You are beyond conceptualization. You're beyond definition. You are mysterious. So chi simply means alive, aliveness. It's the aliveness of you, but we can't define it. All of a sudden your heart starts to beat. Some 13 weeks in utero, right? The heart starts to beat. But energy, if we looked at it from physics, energy should be transformed. It should have something that starts it. So the heartbeat is like a match that learned how to light itself. Like a match that learned how to light itself. But not only that, it regrows and lights itself again and again and again. So your heart is unexplainable. We can't explain it in Eastern mysticism, nor can we explain it in Western science. We don't know what the heart is. We don't know what the, as we look at anything within you, we run into the mysterious. Your mind, your consciousness, your spirit. So in Chinese medicine, there's many different kinds of qi. Many different kinds of qi. What's the plural of qi? Is it cheese? I know, I, I, I. So the hardest part about this, the hardest part is how to say it, qi gong. So I came here and lots of people were saying, oh, I love your, I love your program. Oh, you're that guy that does the um, Dong Gong Kong? Well, yeah. <laughs> so I'm the guy that does the Dong Gong Kong. Qi Gong, Qi means energy. Gong really means a skill at working with energy. To be skillful at working with energy. What is energy? The mysterious life force energy. So in the classics of Chinese medicine, the Yellow Emperor's classic of Chinese medicine written some three, 4,000 years ago. You guys have all read it, right? It's a classic. It's a real page turner. There is described 360, more than 360 different kinds of chi. Different kinds of chi. There's lots of different kinds of chi. So there's good energy. We call that righteous chi. And there's bad energy. We call that pathogenic chi. It doesn't feel so good. So one thing about energy is always transforming from one state to another. It's always in the process of change and transformation. 
The one thing that is true about this universe, that it's moving, it's growing, it's expanding. So things are always changing. So we don't want our energy to get stuck or to get stagnant. We don't want our energy to get stuck or stagnant. We want it to circulate. We want to go with the flow of the energy. And so flow means that we drop into the moment, we connect to the energy, and then we ride the current from one moment to another. It becomes cohesive. So it's not just about dropping into the moment. I'm here. Oh, that moment's gone. Now I'm here again. Well, that moment's gone, right? And we flicker in and out of the moment. When, when we drop into flow state, we begin to get this cohesive feeling. You ride the wave of energy. You ride the wave. Can you tell I'm from California? We're riding waves already. We ride the wave. You're going, f- you're, you're co-creating. You're collaborating with the energy that's all around you. So invisible life force energy, what is that? That is the mind, that is the heart, that is love, that is connection. Because we can't say, here, when I get home from AFES, look what I did, here's, here's what I connected with. Here's the love I brought home. It's an experience. And everything in life is an experience. Your mind is an experience. We get to experience the thoughts. We get to experience the emotions. But they come and they go. And so key to this practice is letting go and relaxing. Relaxation is a principle of this practice of letting go so that we can actually be connected to something higher. We can be connected to the divine. We can be connected to nature. We can be connected to ourselves. And what the world is calling for right now, connection. Deeper connection. And when you get in touch with energy, we see the connections, not the separations. Because right now, with objective Western ways of thinking, we see the objects. We see the physical energy. There's a space between me and you. There's a space between the floor and the ceiling. I only see the floor and the ceiling. I only see the objects. But there's space. There's invisible energy in this room. The invisible energy. That's how technology works, right? Our technology is working with invisible space. So Qigong is an ancient technology. Should we call it technology? Technology. I just just made up a new word. Okay. Technology. Technology, because we work with who you are to optimize your energy. So these ancient masters were looking at how to optimize the potential of themselves. So if we say, what is energy? In, West, in the Western world, we, we talk about energy. It comes in four kinds, four kinds of energy, gravity. And then we say, what, what, what is gravity? Where does it come from? I, I don't know. That's what they say. I don't know. We know, it's a, we know it exists, but we, it's mysterious. Gravity is mysterious. Right? And what else? We have electromagnetism. We have the strong force and the weak force. We talk about those four kinds of energy in the West. But what about love? What about connection? What about relationships? So in Chinese medicine, Qigong, we talk about all these different kinds of qi because it's your aliveness. So you need to breathe. You need to eat. You need to sleep. What else do you need to do? We need to connect with each other. We need to connect to nature. When we feel connected, we do not destroy nature. Because nature is your extended body. It's your energy body. So when you go out and look at the Dead Sea and you see the sunset, you say, that's me. That's my energy. Because I'm not separate from that. I'm not separate from that. And when we feel separate, we feel cut off. We feel cut off from source. And unfortunately, despite all our technology, we have more stress than ever before. Right? And we have kids that are full of anxiety and depression because they're cut off. They're not getting connected to source energy. They're getting connected just to technology. And so we want to balance what we're doing in modern life with these ancient wisdom techniques from Qigong, from yoga. These practices are old and they are an art and a science. I love it now because Western medicine and Western research is showcasing what the East has said for thousands of years. You know, they're like, yep, Stress is bad for your health. And you're like, really? Really? Okay. So the ancient masters have said that for 4,000 years. Yes, mindfulness works. Like, okay, well, we need some evidence base. We like that. We like to know why. Why does it work? We like to know this and understand the reasons why things work. Because if we know the why, then we're motivated to do it. So the practice of Qigong, 4,000 years old, Qi, life force energy, it comes in many different kinds. Where do we get this energy? Well, number one, breath. That's your quickest source to energy. So you've seen a lot of speakers come up, 
take a deep breath, right? Why? Why does it work? Because breath is a reflection of your emotions. Breath is a reflection of your mind. So when you take charge of your breathing, all of a sudden you get connected to every other kind of energy in your body. Because breath reflecting emotions, meaning that when you have an emotion, your breathing will reflect that. So if you're angry, how do people breathe? Strong exhale. Anybody have teenagers? You get the, like I was like, come on girls, you know, it's time for school, come on. And they're like, dad, relax, I know what I'm doing. You know, they're, so anger is gonna be a, a focused exhale, a forced exhale, and a resistance to inhaling, why? When you have to take a deep breath, you take energy in. You gotta take in somebody's perspective. You gotta take in their viewpoint, right? So breath is going to shift your emotions. So you wanna feel better, you breathe better, okay? Um, What about sadness? It's like the opposite of anger. So when people are sad, when they're crying, right? They have a resistance to exhaling. So they, and they hold, but then what happens? You have to exhale, so, right? And then somebody's crying. So crying actually will be seen as a Qigong exercise. You are going to release energy as you go through these different emotions and you're changing your breathing. So when we wanna feel better and we wanna feel more connected, we wanna be connected to our joy, our happiness, our inner peace, you change your breathing, you breathe slowly. You wanna try it? Let's breathe, let's do a Qigong breathing practice really quick. By the way, we're gonna do a whole movement practice in like an hour outside overlooking the Dead Sea and we'll take you through a whole practice of Qigong. So when you inhale, you wanna do so, if you wanna cultivate peace and contentment and relaxation, breathe slowly, breathe slowly. When you wanna let go of emotions like nervousness or anxiety or tension, you breathe in through the nose and then out through the mouth, as some of the teachers have instructed. If you wanna cultivate inner peace, try this. Inhale five seconds in through your nose. Pause, let the breath hover at the top of the inhale. Hover, and then exhale slowly through your nose, very slowly. And then pause at the bottom of your exhale. And then inhale slowly through your nose. And exhale slowly through your nose. And all of a sudden, a a minute or so of this breathing is the cultivation of inner peace, contentment, relaxation, present moment awareness. So chi comes from all these different sources. The nice thing about breathing is that you can control it. If I said, digest your food from lunch a little faster right now, we can't do it, right? Slow down your heart rate. No, we can't do that either. Breathing is like your entry point into the operating system. Life is ruled by invisible forces and those invisible forces are present within you. Most of the things in life you don't have to do. Amazing, most of the things in life you don't have to do. You don't have to beat your heart, right? But who's beating your heart right now? Something is. Who's breathing your lungs when you're not thinking about it? Who's digesting your food? These are all you but it's not your voluntary action. See, we have a misconception that we're only our voluntary actions. I'm only what I do. Then you're missing most of yourself. You're missing most of yourself. And then we mistrust ourselves. And then we mistrust nature because there's an invisible intelligence within you. And how do we get in touch with that? It's through relaxation. It's through not forcing. It's power, but not force. It's like the power of water. When you stand in a wave, when you go into the river, you feel this power, right? It's because everything is cohesive and working together. So you have all this energy inside of you, but when we're stressed out, when we're worried, when we're full of anxiety, it disconnects the energy within you and then we have no flow. So stress will kind of kink up the hose of your meridian lines, of your energy pathways and then we don't have any power. So we want everything coherent, cohesive, and in flow. So qi, in Chinese, the pictogram was mist rising off of water. Wasn't that beautiful? Or mist or steam coming off of rice. So this idea of qi is nourishing, and it's also invisible. It's the formless and the form. Because yes, we are this body, this is form, but we're also this love. We're also this consciousness. We're also this spirit. And those are all invisible. 
Those are all invisible. And what we're truly seeking, seeking in life is experiences of this invisible life force energy. We want chi. Why do I want that new car? Why do I want that new house? Why do I want that relationship? Well, because we want to experience love, invisible. I might want security, an invisible energy. You can access invisible energy directly. Then all those other things out there in life become much more relaxed. We're not grasping for it because when you grasp water, it slips through your fingers. If you open to it and receive it with relaxation, we become the container of all of this really wonderful, powerful energy. So I do wanna take you through a quick Qigong experience. I want you to experience your chi for yourself in less than a few minutes. So what we're gonna do is activate your chi and then we're gonna do a little bit of partnering because this is all about connection, all about relationships. I'm gonna show you how to connect energy together with a partner. Let's activate our own chi. So meridian lines are energy pathways that move through the body. This is where the acupuncture points are. Along meridians are points. And these are like step up converters. These are like power centers. If it was a river, it would be like where the water creates a vortex. And these are very powerful areas that can influence your energy. Okay, so the ends of your meridians are in your fingertips. So let's just first start like check in, check in with yourself. Just put your hands in your lap. Just notice how you feel. Where are we starting from, right? Qigong is a wonderful map to guide you from where you are now to where you wanna be. If we don't have a map, it's very difficult to navigate the energies of life. So check in with yourself, where am I now? We feel pretty good. We've been at this event, meeting new people, but just check in with yourself. How do my hands feel? What's the state of my mind? What's the state of my emotions? It's always good when we're looking at a map to know where you are, so then we can navigate where we wanna go. <clears throat> okay, now, now that we've checked in, let's activate energy. What I want you to do is take your fingertips and rub them back and forth together. So this is just the ends of the meridians, we're just gonna activate them. So fingernails are touching, and then you go back and forth. Now as you do this, I want you to breathe. It's like igniting the fire. Inhale through your nose, and then just Let's, let's ignite the fire. Inhale. And we did less than 30 seconds. Do one more time. And then put your hands in your lap and notice how you feel. Are your hands tingling? Are they buzzing? Electrical. So get curious about that sensation because yes, we can put the word chi to it. We could call it energy, but it's more than that. It's life itself. It's the same force that moves the tides in the ocean and grows the tree from the acorn to the full grown tree. It's the same force that beats your heart and you're just feeling it right now. Okay, everybody stand up. Everybody stand up. Let's do a little Qigong practice. Qigong is about slowing down. It's the power of going slow because life is so sped up. Right? If you ask anybody, hey, how are you doing? I'm so busy. I'm so busy. Everybody's so busy, but we all have the same amount of time. So how do you use your time to create what you want? To be creative, to be the artist of your life. To be the artist of your life. So gong, remember gong is skill. And so if somewhere in your life is unskillful, this isn't quite working, it doesn't feel good. I just don't know the resources and the energy to figure out how to transform that situation and circumstance into something more positive. Because energy can transform. You've seen it in your life, it can transform. So how do we do it? We're gonna slow down, we're gonna synchronize breath with movement, so we're gonna go like this. Just take your hands up. This is called the waterfall. And I just want you to pour in this relaxation. Exhale. Good, and scoop up, inhale. There's all kinds of positive energy in this room all kinds of wonderful positive energy in nature and in the universe. Go slow, inhale through the nose and exhale through the nose as well. And bring in the kind of energy that you need in your life right now. Clarity of mind, present moment awareness, inner peace, deep relaxation. Bring in those connections, that inner love, Inhale. 
Exhale. Do that one more time. Now just take that energy and bring it right here to your heart. Right here, don't touch the hands. I want you to feel this invisible energy. And just go back and forth a little bit like this. And feel something right in the center of your chest. Because the heart is the great healer. It creates coherence in your energy system. And when your energy system is coherent, your body heals. Your body heals. You have tremendous healing power within you. And now turn to somebody that's next to you. Just turn and face them with this ball at your heart center. Turn and face them with this ball at your heart center. And this is a Qigong hug. You don't even, you're not even gonna touch, but it's powerful. Now, I want you to eat. close your eyes. Close your eyes. And you're just gonna feel your heart and then lean in just to like a little bit, just rock towards your toes and feel how when you lean in, this energy starts to get stronger. And then slowly rock to your heels. This is my energy. And as you rock towards your toes, I'm sharing my heart energy with you. And then rock towards your heels and rock towards your toes and feel the power of connection. Because love comes in many different forms, many different forms. The love we have for our kids, the love we have for our partners, the love we have for our communities, the love of nature. And we, as human beings, human energy systems, love to connect. And this is what makes life so exquisitely blissful and powerful. And then slowly open your eyes, thank your partner, smile to them, a smile of the heart. You can give them a hug now if you want. And you can go ahead and sit down. And you can go ahead and sit down. So in, how long was that? We did like a less than five minute practice. Less than five minute practice. Coherent, clear energy. Coherent, clear energy. Could people feel that? Raise your hands if you could feel that. Two hands, raise the chi and raise the roof. So wonderful job, wonderful job. We're gonna do more Qigong because Qigong is, is a practice. There's 3,500 styles of Qigong, you guys. 3,500 styles. And in our class afterwards, we're gonna learn just half of those. We're gonna learn about 1,500 styles of Qigong <laughs> in less than four minutes. But we'll experience it. And what I love to do is break Qigong practice down into principles. So breath is, one, is the starting principle, relaxation moving from your center, activate energy, go with the flow, so flowing practices, postural alignment, and meditation. These are the sort of seven or eight principles that all Qigong will do. Now, Qigong is different than any other forms of exercise. You're moving slowly a lot of times. Your body's moving, but you're moving slowly, so that Qigong becomes the sunset or the sunrise of exercise. It's relaxed movement. Does anybody like sunrise or sunset? How do you feel? It's like, ah. This is like, oh my gosh, it feels so good. I love watching this. That's how Qigong feels in your body because yin and yang are in harmony and in balance. Yin and yang are in harmony and balance. So what we'll do is we'll harmonize the energy. When you harmonize your own body's energy, when you get out of stress and move your chi into the heart, healing happens. Out of stress means you're out of survival mode and you're into relaxation, rest and digest, parasympathetic, where chi circulates. When chi gets stagnant, think of water again. What happens when water stagnates? It's not healthy. When we circulate our energy, all of a sudden we feel good. So chi circulation will help to heal negative thoughts of the mind and bring you into the present moment. It'll awaken your heart and bring you into a space of love and joy. It'll heal your body because your body already has incredible healing power. So. In Qigong practice and Chinese medicine, often it's not the doctor that heals. They just set up the circumstances for you to heal within yourself, within yourself. Thank you guys so much for joining. <laughs>